Well, thank you for coming today. And thank you also to the Institute for Policy and Governance at Tech for sponsoring today's event. And I hope we will have a robust conversation, community conversation this afternoon. We find ourselves at a time when our shared commitments as a society, whether it's to educating our children, paying our teachers, or paving our roads, are increasingly denigrated by some of the loudest voices in our society. At such an angry time, how do we build community and reach consensus? How do we bring very different communities in this county together to address serious issues, to create a shared vision, and then to make that vision a reality? A little background, I'm a Blacksburg native. This is what Price's Fork Road, across from Heathwood, looked like when I grew up there, a little different. Price's Fork was a distant village, many of whose rural families never even came into Blacksburg. Of course, we were segregated, uh, but we had no Bull Connors here. We were very politely segregated. But some of the worst segregation then and today, I would argue, in this county is not racial, but one of heritage. There is a culturally rich Appalachian community here in this county whose heritage and story have been buried beneath our community's university veneer. It was ignored when I grew up, and it's still largely ignored today. University communities are often distant from their surrounding. Thanks to my father, my brothers and I grew up with our feet in both communities, the college but also the country community with its Appalachian roots. Because we lived on a farm and we milked cows, we were country kids. Mrs. Langhorn, who most of us remember as the most feared teacher in the second grade, put into words one time just this rather stunning arrogance that was common in this community. After I was an adult, I met her and reintroduced myself to her years later, and she said, yes, teachers always complained about those country kids, but I said, country kids aren't all bad. Well, look at the Oban chains. <laughs> and I thought, I have never been damned by such faint praise. But like Mrs. Langhorn, most of us are either ignorant or dismissive of our community's Appalachian heritage. How many of you know that the German settlement around Price's Fork dates back to 1740? that the Prices built a stone fort there on Struble's Creek during the French and Indian War that remained active until the Revolutionary War. It's also a history interwoven with Virginia Tech. The longest serving dean in Virginia Tech history was Dean Harvey Lee Price, dean of the College of Agriculture for whom Price Hall is named. He owned the property along that creek where the forts were located. And today, his granddaughter is trying to give that property to Montgomery County for a park that would honor her grandfather and also protect the heritage of the early German settlers here in this part of Virginia. The supervisors, however, in their wisdom, have turned down the offer of this park. Their reasoning, that there's no money to develop a park. Now, I think we all agree it's tight financial times, but one of our county's most eloquent community leaders, Jimmy Price, who I'm proud is here today and I know you will want to hear from, Jimmy's strategizing now about how to save this site, even if there aren't public dollars today to develop it. This park would not only preserve our county's colonial history, it would also provide recreation and a walking trail for a large subdivision hidden behind Price's Fort that has no recreational facilities. You could become involved in this project. When you see an article that will probably appear in the newspaper soon, you could call your supervisor and express your support. You could volunteer and take your children out on the site to help lay out trails or simply to walk and bike through the community. But why should you bother? What's my point here? For one thing, it's an opportunity for you and your children to see and hear about this country's history in this nation's history firsthand from people who are passionate about their ancestors 
and love to tell stories that connect directly back to our colonial days. Also, part of Price's Fork and Merrimack's history is also the story of this nation's coal mining heritage. The only time I'm fairly sure that Montgomery County ever appeared on the front of Life magazine was when there was a coal mining disaster here in the 40s that claimed the lives of many local miners. When you or your children hear Jimmy Price talk about running home from school each day, see if daddy was still alive after his shift in the mine, you will understand the struggle, the hopes, and the cost of our community's development, the amazing changes that have occurred in our and our parents' lifetimes here. But most importantly, such projects are an opportunity to get to know people from different parts of our community and to bridge our differences. Needs such as a park or a new school or community threats such as our disappearing rural land can be catalysts for discovering common goals and making common cause here in our community. We must recognize that there are problems that we cannot solve by ourselves, no matter our individual wealth or our intelligence. And these require our merged assets and our energies, whether that's through local government, through nonprofits, or through our neighborhood groups. So when issues arise that divide us, if you had gotten to know folks like Jimmy Price, or community members from Reiner or Elliston, you'd have a personal connection and a degree of trust that would allow you to discuss divisive issues with openness, understanding, and mutual respect. The place where we most of often confront the differences here in our community is in the annual fight over the county school budget. Perhaps the one positive out of the Blacksburg High gym collapse is that it motivated a lot of people to become involved in local government for the first time in the debate over a new school. Because our different county communities don't know each other, we're quick to caricature each other when the budget and the county tax rate come up for a vote each year. You are either an affluent Blacksburg parent who wants a Cadillac school for your own child but could care less about the kids in the more rural schools, or you're an ignorant rural tightwad who doesn't value education now that your own kids are grown. The reality is more complex, and the decisions on tax rates and school funding are difficult for county supervisors and for us voters. Most of us here, I would argue, are probably lucky enough to have a stable salary that comes in each month, and our county taxes are paid invisibly with our monthly mortgage. For others, though, that real estate tax bill lands in their mailbox with a big thud twice a year. A local farmer may be sitting on $2 million worth of property, often inherited from his great-grandparents, but he's struggling to make it through the year on $20,000 a year. One farmer I worked with through the land trust showed up in my office one day. He owned 400 acres of prime development land that was worth several million dollars, and he was a smart farmer. who farmed intelligently all his life. And he said, you know, you're going to think it's a little sad. I'm 59 years old, I've got $500 in the bank, and I owe 1000 The county tax bill for such families is a serious worry. Nevertheless, we must educate our children, and we must pay our teachers. I assume all of you know that is how embarrassing it is that we have the lowest teacher salaries in our region, and we have for generations. So where is the balance, and how do we and our elected officials generate the always increasing tax revenue needed for our schools while respecting that wide disparity in our citizens' ability to pay taxes? Education is one of the shared needs that gives us an impetus to get to know each other, and realize that we must seek solutions not just for children in Blacksburg, but also in Reiner and Elliston. When we seek answers for Andy's question on bridging our differences, we can't overestimate the importance of public education, and I do stress public. Over the generations, the one place here in Montgomery County, and I would add, argue in probably most parts of our nation, the one place where different parts of the community come together is in the grade school or high school classroom. I still remember the year a whole new set of classmates showed up at school 
transferring in from the four-room school in the Catawba Valley where they'd been in primary school. It was the first time most of us Blacksburg kids had ever had friends from this historic part of the county. Virginia Tech also has had a long tradition of, of educating students from poor and rural backgrounds, along with children from large cities and even foreign worlds. I recently heard a Virginia Tech alum who's CEO of a Fortune 500 company say that he probably could not have worked his way through Virginia Tech these days because of the increased cost. Public, edu public education has long been the tool that America used to equalize opportunity and reduce the tension of class differences here in our nation. As Virginia taxpayers, we used to pay much of the cost of a college education that made this American dream possible for generations of Virginia students. Today, the State Council of Higher Education reports that state budget reductions have put the affordability and accessibility of Virginia's nationally acclaimed system of public education at risk. The cost of a higher education versus a family income has surpassed its highest historical levels. Education used to be considered a public good. Think of the GI Bill and the difference that made here in our nation. Now it's treated as a private benefit. We risk this great equalizer by forsaking our commitment to funding public schools and universities. We can afford to do more, we just don't choose to do it. When I was an editorial writer at the Roanoke Times back in 2000, I wrote this editorial over and over again. Virginia is the 11th richest state in the union, yet it ranked 47th in the nation for funding for the arts equally poorly for funding for education, 50th in the nation in per capita funding for natural resources. We don't have to be last. We choose to be because we no longer value the public good, the common wealth we create with our local and our state tax dollars. Andy has also talked a lot about leadership, and individuals can make a huge difference Yet I'd also point out that they can't be leaders unless there's a community of concerned citizens who will join them. My experience was with, with the New River Land Trust. The Land Trust was created to help landowners and government conserve family farms, mountain ridge lines, and the New River Scenic Corridor. Here's one of the family farms he put under easement. Here is the historic Ingalls Ferry Farm and tavern built in 1772 by Mary Draper Ingalls and her husband. It's still owned by the family. And here is the stretch of the New River. This, the land trust started with one person, Leslie Howard, a regional planner who tired of hearing her fellow professionals talk only about development and never about conserving those places that define the New River Valley. She had the vision and she had the outrage. A small group of us came together, invested almost two years of time researching and organizing a land trust. One December, we finally got up our courage. We pooled our Christmas card lists and mailed out brochures and letters. And almost to our amazement, the community responded. Individually, none of us could have saved a single farm unless we were millionaires, but together, we have conserved over 35,000 acres here in this valley. Under the continued leadership of John Eustace, who's here today, we're going to celebrate next month the protection of 1,000 acres on the New River with $2.1 million in federal funding that we won in a nationwide competition. You as a community and your support made this possible. Land conservation is also one of those issues that crosses and unites all of our county communities, that brings together newcomers who love this mountain landscape and families who've owned their land since their sixth great uncle was killed on it during the French and Indian War. And that's a true, we put that farm under conservation easement. Other nonprofits here also make a significant difference. The Community Foundation, which now has $7 million in its endowment, 
is unprecedented in the way it has involved the broadest spectrum of our community. Andy Morikawa our, and also the Community Foundation Board actively reached out to all parts of this region, all incomes, races, ages. They developed a vision. They listened to diverse voices. They welcomed people, and they deserve your support today. But the face of our community is determined by government and its decisions, local government. We need to support the best people to run for supervisor and town council, and then we need to make sure that they hear from us and understand and enact our vision for our community. For example, if we want to preserve open space, you need to identify that issue to them and insist that it become a government priority and that there be active policies to make it happen. I also can't end without putting in a word about the downtown business community. I clipped this cartoon out of the New York Times two weeks ago. It's again about a neighborhood in New York City where all of the people love this little mom and pop shop, but none of them ever shop there. Every day, you vote with your dollars about what our downtown will be. I have friends who come from Northern Virginia and Raleigh and Atlanta, and the first thing they want to do is head to Fringe Benefit in downtown Blacksburg and shop or go to Gillies for dinner. They love the farmer's market, and their kids love it too. But I get frustrated at how many of my friends don't shop downtown or even sound like, why would you even go downtown for dinner? They prefer to send their dollars to the CEO of Amazon or Zappos rather than to Mancine or Atlanta at Matrix. This deciding to buy a wedding present or buying your week's vegetables is a small step, but one that can make a big difference in your community. And I think you'll be surprised at the pleasure it brings you. So I'd like to leave you with these few ideas. We have great power to shape our community. Unlike trying to contact President Obama, you have unprecedented access to your local elected officials whose decisions determine the face and character of Blacksburg and Montgomery County. As a newspaper editor for 30 years, I could never understand why people ignored their local officials and instead focused all their or their limited civic attention on distant celebrity politicians. At least learn the name of your supervisor and talk to her at Kroger's when you run into her about the county school budget. Also, at a time when taxes and the concept that we benefit from a commonwealth are ridiculed, look for opportunities to work with people in your, large communi in your larger community on needs such as education or threats such as our disappearing rural landscape. Such issues and threats give us the energy and impetus to come together. There are problems that we cannot solve by ourselves, but we can solve together. This is the place I've chosen to live as an adult, and I believe it's a great place to grow old. Some of you may remember my father in his red sweater taking his daily walk along our farm on Price's Fork Road. If he got tired, he'd slow down and lean for a minute on his walking stick. And people he didn't know would stop and offer him a ride, worried that, that he couldn't make it up the hill. He felt until the day he died at 96, his connections in a community that cared for him. Look for ways to involve yourself in this broader community. Support local businesses with your dollars. Be curious about your community's history. The common needs and common wealth of this community will require the investment of our energies, our tax dollars, our shopping dollars, our charitable dollars, but will result in a rich place to live, raise our children, and grow old. Thank you very much.